I did a video yesterday where I talked about M. Night Shyamalan's movie The Village, and since then I was sort of, I sort of became curious to see what was out there, uh, so I did a little bit of internet exploring to see what, you know, other people might be saying about this movie that I, I, you know, I've, I've always felt, uh, was, a a, uh, an overlooked gem, um, and interestingly enough, but not surprisingly, um, the people who are out there talking about this movie are obsessed with it. They absolutely adore it. They love it. It's, there are all these superlatives surrounding, uh, the way they talk about this movie. It's like the greatest movie ever. And for me, it's, it's in my top 10, but you know, that's close to greatest. Um, it's certainly among the greats, but, um, but it's much overlooked, uh, and also much denigrated. Uh, and it's been my experience ever since seeing it in 2004, when it was released, that it was a, a film that was, uh, you know, largely, uh, denigrated and, and, uh, put down, um, and, you know, people rolled their eyes at it and, and so forth. And I try to go a little bit into my explanation for why, why that was when I wrote my, uh, my review back in, back in 2004 for The Last Ditch, which got republished at, uh, um, Alternative Right, now Affirmative Right, dot com. Um, and one of the reasons is that, well, I don't, I don't even, I don't know if this is a, a reason I actually mention in my review. I mean, the other day I talked about how Shyamalan is somebody who I, I think is, uh, in the best possible way, a thought criminal, uh, from the perspective of today's thought guardians. He is a thought criminal. He's, you know, somebody who, without directly stating this is where he comes from, he's somebody who, who really believes in the eternal verities that today are being, uh, uh crushed underfoot by uh, the demons who rule us if i may speak uh, in a way that um, some some you know might strike some as hyperbolic but i don't think i'm being hyperbolic when i say it um so i don't think i did i don't think i mentioned this the other day but but one of the things about the movie the village is that it's entirely devoid of irony and we are, you know, living in a time where irony has corroded much of our sensibility, uh, much of the way that we view art, uh, much of the way that we view the world around us. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm somebody who understands and appreciates irony, so I'm not putting it down, but I am saying that in order to appreciate a movie like The Village, and I think to, in order to appreciate a lot of M. Night Shyamalan's work generally, you have to uh, be willing to go uh, into this realm with him where, uh, you know, in a way that's trusting and uh, and that doesn't involve, uh, where you don't take along this sort of sneering, ironic sensibility where, for example, you know, this is a movie which um, is full of emotion. And uh, the soundtrack is incredible. I, I, I love this. I mean, I, I've just re having revisited it, the, the str there's a string section that plays through uh, a lot of this movie. It, it's, it's a very immersive soundtrack in much the same way that the soundtrack to the Joker, or sorry, to, to Joker um, 2019 uh, was, was immersive. You know, there, it doesn't really have any uh, themes that, that keep coming back uh, uh, as far as, you know, refrains, musical refrains or anything like that. But there, there is, uh, um, just this very immersive kind of, um, quality to the music. And, you know, it's, it's, a it's a film in which we, we are meant to, uh, see earnest characters earnestly expressing themselves in very, very earnest in a very earnest manner that seems stilted uh, again it's because it's they're they're talking like you know old you know in, in this kind of old english-esque sort of way uh where they don't use contractions and and you know there's 
there's just uh, uh, again it's it's something where if you if you have if you come into it with this with the with the spirit that uh, oh I'm gonna poke at this and and uh, look at look for things that are that are um, you know that, that that strike me as silly then uh, you know it's easy to to come away uh, mocking this that or the other thing but in my estimation this is a movie that's worth suspending your sense of irony over and um, and I'm just wanting to underline this by uh, my by saying what I'm saying here um, you know the the you know it's in it's interesting to note that there are uh, there seem to be uh, a lot of people out there who really love this movie uh, in the same way that I love it and I was sort of unfamiliar uh, I didn't I didn't know I sort of thought I was more or less not alone but I, I didn't know that there were so many other people that, that just uh, were uh, very effusive in their praise of this movie and and, and very much uh, talking it up and very much uh, you know uh, uh, you know using superlatives to talk about you know this is my favorite line of dialogue ever you know the, the like the, the line that I referred to the other day about love uh, uh, where I, I misidentify the character who said it. it it's William Hurt's character who says uh, the world uh, bows its knee in awe before love uh, and uh, you know what we've created here is innocence and I'm not willing to give that up in the in the context of the scene it's very emotional and it's it's very for me it strikes all the right notes that's the important thing it's not just wasted emotion it's not just you know going for the throat going for the heart you know pulling on the heartstrings in this kind of exploitive way that i really can't stand i hate movies like dead poet society that that are just trying to you know for example that's the one that comes to mind the most that just just go after your heart and 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 uh in a way that seems really uh, uh cliched and dishonest and you know where they're they're just uh stacking the deck making the evil people look really really evil and just uh you know it, it's there's something really dishonest and egregious about that that style of filmmaking but Shyamalan to me uh, you know, wears his emotions on his sleeves, and particularly in the village, I think the this this movie wears its emotions on its sleeves, uh, but in a way that I think uh, it earns it. It does, you know. You, and again, that's that's my take on the movie. You 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 know, feel free to disagree if you've seen it and you feel otherwise. But if you have seen it and you're not sure, and you you you, you know, you didn't really necessarily feel one way or the other I would just encourage you just to watch it again and um, again do what I'm saying you know like give yourself over to it be willing to to um, you know let yourself be taken away uh, you know taken uh, under the under its spell as it were you know and and I don't <laughs> you know I don't uh, talk this way because usually because there's lots of uh, um, you know worthless uh, would-be seducer films out there uh, you know and uh, it is they are the equivalent of you know Lotharios uh, in in uh, in artistic uh, form they're trying to seduce you they're trying to put one over on you just but just they're, they're trying to take advantage of you but I think that this is a film that really actually loves you uh, and <laughs> it's, it's a funny metaphor to use but I think it's true I think there's a truth to it and I just wanted to underline that uh, thanks for watching let me know what you think my name is Andy Nowicki check out my work at altrightnovelist.com